Now, in the USA, President Trump has announced that he wants a temporary ban on all immigration into the country. The president said that the move, which is expected to provoke legal challenges, was needed to protect American jobs during this pandemic. New York, in particular, has been hit hard by the effects of coronavirus. Thousands of people have died, and the city's immigrant communities have suffered more than most. Live to New York and our correspondent, Nick Bryant. America is an immigrant nation, Hughes, so even a temporary ban on immigration would be an extraordinary move. And critics of Donald Trump are saying it's less about protecting the US economy and more about boosting his chances of re-election in November, four years ago. A tough stance on immigration helped him reach the White House. It is immigrant communities that have been devastated by the virus and the economic fallout. We've seen that for ourselves in the New York borough of Queens. In a city of ambition, in a city of abundance. A scene that looks like a throwback to the days of the Great Depression. These people were queuing for food handouts. The length of the line, a measure of the desperation. Every person has a story of need. Almost all are economic victims of COVID-19. Only a few weeks ago, restaurant workers, cleaners, labourers, now thrown out of work. I'm planning to come back. Alfredo Marino was laid off last month. We have a little bit of money saved, so we're trying to survive with that while, uh, you know... Everything. When do you think that money will run out? <laughs> we don't know yet. I mean, we uh, talk with our landlord to, to see what we're going to do this month, but uh, I don't know how we're going to survive about it. Even in this time of crisis, Mary Batista spoke of her civic and national pride. We are a nation where we support each other, and you've seen the tremendous, um, the abundance of support, you know, from all the Americans. And I'm glad to be a New Yorker, you know, and God bless America. And these are the meager food packages they spent hours queuing for. A sandwich, some apple sauce. In this, the land of plenty. From Queens, you can see the residential skyscrapers of Billionaire's Row in Manhattan. But these neighborhoods are part of another America. One that's been ground zero in New York's outbreak. One that's the home to the hardest hit public hospital. Here, a mother and daughter had to wave up at the windows to their husband and father, his birthday spent in COVID isolation. On its doorstep is a neighborhood called Corona, heavily populated by immigrants who don't have the luxury of teleworking from home. People pursuing American dreams that are being crushed by this global contagion. The coronavirus crisis has really held up a mirror to income inequality in America and especially New York. Many of the richest people simply fled this city early on and headed to their coastal and country retreats. That was not an option for the poor. Many people here live in multi-generational households in overcrowded housing. And the lower your income, the harder it is to be socially distant. With Latino and black residents dying at twice the rate of white New Yorkers, the local councilman, Francisco Moya, says the coronavirus has revealed a tale of two cities. A lot of the Latino community and the poor community uh, are living uh, 10 to uh, in one bedroom apartments. Uh, when you think of New York City, you're accustomed to thinking of these luxury condos and high rises uh, throughout the city. But you have to come out to the outer boroughs and see how the working class and the poor have to live. In this crisis of need, New York's iconic yellow cabs have been drafted in to deliver aid. One box to each family. Taxi drivers have become caregivers, handing out meals to people who can't leave their homes. New York believes it's past the peak of its coronavirus outbreak, but it's still in the depths of this economic disaster. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Queens. Now, family lawyers say that some parents who are separated are exploiting the lockdown to try to limit access to their children. But parents who do this could be facing legal action. The head of the family courts in England and Wales, Sir Andrew McFarlane, says that children should continue to spend time with both parents as long as everyone is healthy. Our correspondent, Frankie McCamley, has the story. I'm coming home to an empty house on my own. It is quite a lonely place to be and then you're not hearing from the one person that you really want to see. 
Alex, whose identity we're protecting, is a key worker. On the day the UK went into lockdown, the mother of his child restricted contact with his son, despite court orders stipulating otherwise. The most things I miss is actually just physically seeing him in front of me. The big thing is just to be able to hold your child's hand. Alex says his partner used his key worker position against him, stating he's at high risk of catching and spreading the disease. Current guidance states that if parents live in separate households, then children under the age of 18 can be moved from one parent's home to the other after the parents have had a reasonable discussion to make sure the children are not being put at risk. But there are many families where the relationship and the trust has completely broken down. Those families will often seek out legal representation. Some working in the profession say they've been overwhelmed with calls for clarification and witnessed parents abusing the system. Unfortunately, in high conflict cases where parents are not communicating, then any excuse, I'm afraid, to change contact arrangements can be used. Um, and the coronavirus, sadly, seems to be providing parents with a reason to prevent contact happening. What parents really need at the, at the moment is clear rules on when they should and shouldn't be changing child arrangements. Can you move your children between the two households? Well, uh, it's very, very difficult, but no, you should not. The Cabinet Minister, Michael Gove, added to the confusion by performing a high-speed U-turn during a round of interviews at the start of lockdown. Those under the age of 18, children under the age of 18, can see both parents. A senior family judge says if both parents are healthy, contact should continue. If the parents are acting in a cynical and opportunistic manner, then that's wrong and the courts will regard it as wrong. And where contact has been stopped, if uh, in a later day, when there'll be a day of reckoning in court, that's seen to be unjustified, then parents can expect the courts to take action about it. So what would you say to those families who are trying to abuse the system? Don't. Look to the child's welfare. You've got to go the extra mile. Do something that you don't feel you want to do, but do it for the sake of your child. Alex hopes he'll be able to take his son for a walk soon, but for now, all visits are cancelled. Frankie McCamley, BBC News.